Hi, I'm Joanne Banco, author, designer, and online educator at Let'sGoSew.com. Today I want to talk to you about creating a beautiful dress with embroidery added to the, the, the all over or just the hem area. You're going to see both here. So when we talk about embroidering on dress weight fabrics, first of all, we want to be very careful to select a design that is light in weight. Um, the design that, that I'm using, uh, actually I'm, I'm wearing the same design, is from my, my book collection. And it was specifically digitized to stitch out really well on nice dress weight fabric. So if you're going to pick an alternative design, be sure you, you test that design. The next thing we need to do in order to prepare is to determine where we're going to put um, the placement. And you can see on this dress, I chose just a random all over, no real rhyme or reason. I just kept choosing the same pattern, rotating it, and basically positioned it as I went along. In this particular case, I did it before the dress was constructed. I drew, uh, the, traced the, the pattern out on a piece of fabric, and then did all my embroidery before I cut it and before I stitched it. But a lot of times you're gonna want to um, embroider maybe just in a hem area, like I came up with on my final, final option here. Just a nice little border treatment, tone-on-tone um, -tone embroidery, which is one of my favorite techniques for creating a really glamorous kind of you know star quality look. And that makes it really, really just understated but, but very, very elegant. So in that case, I went along the hemline. I constructed the entire dress before I did the embroidery, but I still had to determine placement. So I like to do that with templates. I have embroidery software that gives me the option of printing templates, and then it's an easy method to simply lay it on the pattern, or if I was using my actual skirt piece, this would represent what I would be doing there. When I do that, I like to work from the center out, because my center pattern is gonna be really easy to place. My template has center markings, and then I'm able to space the rest evenly depending on the width of my hem. Let's talk about stabilizer. Stabilizer is one of those issues you could go on and on with, but there's something for every single project. And in this case, I used an iron-on temporary um, tearaway stabilizer, and it, it makes the fabric feel very firm and very crispy, almost paper-like, really. And it is perfect for a design like this that's lightweight and soft. When I'm done, this all tears away, and I'm left with that nice, soft, dress weight fabric. So what I'd like to show you, I'd like to go over to the machine and show you how you can design some different ways for your um, embroidery patterns. And what we've got here is a design, again, another design that I picked from my collection. This one is a multicolored design. I'm going to set the design, and then I'm going to go into the edit mode, and I'm going to choose the little color key. And what this gives me the ability to do is play with the colors. We've got something called color shuffle here. And when I select just random, I can pick colors that I want to use. I'm going to pick just a couple more here. And it will randomly shuffle all different colors. So if you're a little bit color challenged or maybe you don't consider yourself an artist, this is a really easy way to see different color combinations that may well go with your fabric or with your color scheme. Another way to determine new colors and redesign a design with new colors is to select a fabric that has a pretty print that you like. And you know, the artists are very good at putting these together. So you could select those colors and then pick a design and simply do test patterns where you're using different colors that mimic the colors that are in the fabric. That's just another way to design it. But I've got another option here, so I'm going to cancel this one out, and I'm going to go back, and this time I'm going to choose gradient, which is basically tone on tone. And if I pick a color, now I'm going to get gradient tones, or tone on tone look, from one color in many, many, many different options. And what this is doing is just shuffling around the colors and showing me a variety of different ways that I can do this. So I opted after all that for just a single color design. And I've got um, my fabric all hooped and stabilized. I've got my template on, and I've added a little snowman marker. What that allows me to do is precisely place my uh, template on the fabric and not have to worry about hooping accurately. Now, if you don't have this option, then you're just going to very carefully measure and mark where the center of your design is. Which, by the way, let me grab this little template from over here. If you see, if you don't have software to print a template, you can make a paper template in the same size. Just give yourself those same center markings and always start 
by marking your center and then working your way out. So I'm going to cancel this one out. I'm going to go back to the menu and I want to find this design which I have transferred from the CD-ROM onto the USB. And it's this one right here. I'm going to touch Set. I'm going to touch Embroidery. And I did um, go ahead and test a few different colors. I determined I liked that really dark navy blue. When I touch Edit, I'm going to touch that little key that matches the marker here. And again, no matter how I hooped my fabric, when I scan this, it's going to automatically target the design right where the center is. So I can hoop it crooked and still stitch it straight. That's a really nice, nice extra benefit. It found that. Now I've got that tape there. You can see it's going to allow me to simply pull this off. You want to be gentle. You don't want to distort your fabric. Say OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and lower the presser foot and start this stitching. While this is stitching, I want to talk to you a little bit. Let me stop one second and just lower that presser foot just a little bit. Just a little, little high there. And I want to show you some options for finishing the seam. So let's swing over to the serger. And traditionally, when you're serge finishing seams, you are probably going to consider using a three thread wide stitch. That's normal, that's standard, that's a seam that we use for knits, it's very commonly used. But if you have an option with your serger of using a two thread stitch, that is a great, great option to choose for dress weight fabrics. Take a look at how that's raveling. We want to get rid of those ravels, but we want to maintain that lightweight, soft feel of that fabric. So by using a two thread, we're using just the needle. It could be the right or the left. I'm using the left to give it me a little wider stitch and the looper only. And it actually uses a little converter tool that basically um, disengages the upper looper and we're only using a needle and a lower looper. Now I'm gonna skim this edge and trim off that raw edge. Okay. Smooth that out. And if you take a look at this, you'll see that this is a very um, uh, lightweight stitch with only two threads instead of three. So I use this for my bottom hem. I actually used it even for all of my seams so that I could um, have a lightweight finish and press those seams open. It's a dressier garment. I want it to be a little prettier. So let's take a look at the embroidery here. You can see that it is starting to stitch, looking pretty gorgeous. Um, we've got um, a few more minutes to go on here, but if you look at how nice and smooth that is, that's because of, again, the combination of a design that matches the fabric and a stabilizer that is, that is lightweight. So that we may not get that finished. I do have one finished here. So let's go back over to the table and Take a look, a good look at this one. Again, it's a nice um, element design. You can see where I used a couple of different colors. That is really beautiful with that um, dark contrast on there. So consider making your own. Add some tone-on-tone -tone embroidery or add some multicolored embroidery. Be sure to visit the website. We've got complete instructions for you so you can make your own gorgeous, glamorous embroidered dress.